welcome to this Medication TV. You are here for a few minutes of enlightenment on a very, very vital issue. What is that? It is the theme of education, learning, teaching. One of the most important aspect of life of every human being today. Now we would like to share with you a very important dimension of that. That is to speak about teachers whose life is not a work, is not a profession with qualifications, but it's a mission in life. Millions of people have been called to this mission in life and they perform a wonderful mission for the growth, knowledge, of being and becoming of human beings. So what I would like to present to you this morning is to be a teacher, not exactly, to be a good teacher, not exactly, that's good, but how to be a great teacher. How can a teacher be great? What are the essential dimension of this greatness of this teaching mission? So you have before you a very efficient panel to share a few aspects of it. Not so much to give you lots of knowledge, but to initiate an enlightenment process which you may continue on with your own life, with the life of your children or your companions who are in the field of education. Today we know that learning is a lifelong process, not only confined to a small classroom or a school or a college. It's a lifelong process. Opportunities are unlimited. Therefore, let us initiate a process into our life of how to be a learner and how to be a great teacher. That is the purpose for this short video just to initiate a dialogue and continue with your dialogue thereafter in your school, in your home or any other context that you get to get more and more enlightened about being a teacher, a teacher of life a teacher of meaning in life. Welcome for this great adventure, but starting is a few minutes of listening to a group of our companions. Hi, I'm Cheryl Jackson. Welcome to Your Voice. Every school year, parents pray their children get a good teacher. And research shows parents are right. The latest studies say the quality of teacher is the dominant factor in how successful children will be in school. It's more important than money, family circumstances, or cultural backgrounds. Even in the so-called best schools, there are different outcomes in each class, and that's largely due to the teacher. Experts say poor teaching isn't just a nuisance, it's actually detrimental to your child's learning. So what makes a teacher great? Where does this greatness come from? Is it innate or is it learned? And how do parents know if the teacher is great or not? 
I'm joined by three experts who can help us answer these questions. Cindy Carnick davison teaches grade four and five at Regent Heights Public School. She was last year's winner of the Ontario Teachers Federation Award for Elementary School Teachers. Mary Coy was a teacher for many years, then she went back to school for her PhD and is now the head of the Centre for Teacher Education and Development at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. And joining us via webcam from his home in Derby, England is Richard Gerver. He won the British National Teaching Award in 2005 after taking his primary school from the brink of closure to one of the most innovative schools in the world. He's also the author of Creating Tomorrow's Schools Today. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for coming into studio. Thank you, Richard, for joining us again. My pleasure. Let's get right to it. What makes a teacher great? Cindy. I think a tremendous element of care. Uh, the desire to, well, I use an expression called see their hearts sing. And that's for them to discover the joy in learning, but especially the joy in themselves. Okay, Mary? What makes a teacher well, great? Uh, for me, I think a teacher becomes great when she makes her first task uh, in getting to know her students. I call it a getting to know you session. Understanding who they are, where they're from, what kinds of interests they have, what kinds of contributions they can uh, have to the classroom. So it's knowing your students extremely well, knowing your subject areas very well, being a knowledgeable um, person around your specialty or the other subjects you have to teach. People like Cindy teach many subjects. And I think that she's a passionate learner herself. That that uh, starts with getting to know her students. It starts with the kind of lifelong learning around her specialty. But it also start, uh, ends with or, or continues with her lifelong professional learning. Mm -hmm whether it's uh, with colleagues in the school collaboratively or with other peer peers, it never stops. I see them when they come to me as graduate students, but uh, they've been on this journey in many other ways as well. So I think those are three key kind of variables. Okay, um, Richard, what would you say? What makes a great I think, teacher? I mean, I, I would agree with, with both uh, Mary and Cindy. I, the word that keeps coming through to me and always has really is empathy. Mm -hmm. um, for me, great teachers truly understand what makes their students tick. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They're incredibly natural and confident around them. That's another trait, I think, of a truly great teacher. They're confident enough to be themselves. They're truly mm -hmm. confident enough to be themselves with their kids, with their students, because let's face it, we all know that our children aren't stupid. They pick up on the vibe of how any of us are around them. Um, and I think that ability to be relaxed, self-confident, self-assured, and for children to truly get the fact that uh, you care about them, you're passionate about them, and you want to help them develop uh, is absolutely core to any great teacher. Mary, you teach teachers. Yeah. Can you tell which ones will excel? That's a really good question. I've thought quite a bit about it. I think that you can tell um, in pre-service. So the, this is the teacher education program because I teach in both programs. You can really tell when someone has a heart for teaching. And I think it makes an enormous difference in the long run. We can't make great teachers. Tra great teachers become great. They start with something. There's a spark, a fire, uh, an openness, a flexibility, an eagerness to make a difference um, that's there. And you can tell that if this fire is stoked, you know, and if it's developed, then indeed I expect some of those people will become great teachers. Um, in graduate school, it's much easier to tell. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been teaching for 20 years, some of them for five years, many of them actually for more than 10 years. So they've had an opportunity to hone their art. And I liked Richard's comment that caring makes all the difference. When I asked a number of students, so what made your great teachers great? And they talk about people who listen, people who care, people who make very, uh, uh, hold a very high standard to my learning, um, people who take an interest in my life beyond the classroom, people who have expectations that expect me to succeed mm -hmm. um, are key. 
So um, there, I, it's but much easier to tell. When they tell their stories, th these teachers in my graduate classes, of what kinds of things they do with their students, it's also very good. I model probably similar things in both programs, but I model it, it's understood differently with somebody who's been in the classroom for a sure. number of years than somebody who's anticipating going into a classroom. Sure. Okay, now, Cindy, there are great teachers all over the world, uh, despite differences in training. Do you think that a great teacher is born, or can they learn it? I always wanted to work with kids. Mm -hmm. I always took great joy and experienced great pleasure in seeing the sparkle, the shine, the light go on. Uh, so I think I agree with uh, Mary as well as Richard. I think that it's in your heart. I think it is already there. But also working with pre-service teachers myself, I am able to certainly notice a tremendous difference. And you can see the passion. You can see the energy, the enthusiasm, the lust for their own learning, the learning of others, the joy that, they, that is brought to them by seeing those kids shine, by seeing those kids explore avenues and have experiences that they've never had before. So it's not only the teacher, but it's the kids and the relationship between the teacher and those kids that's key. And when Mary spoke about listening to stories, it's not only, um, you know, the stories that they um, come with, but the stories that uh, you bring out of them, the fact that you're hearing about their lives, their background, what has brought them to this place, where they want to go mm -hmm. in the future, and, and helping them harness all of that and bring those dreams to fruition. Richard, let me ask you this then. Is there an it factor? Is there something that these teachers bring to the table that others don't? Yeah, I think I think there is. In in my career, you know, like all of us, I've met some really professional teachers. I've met some good teachers. I've met great teachers. And then every so often, it's my privilege to be in the presence of somebody who's truly special. Uh, I have a, co a colleague that calls those people the magic weavers. They're teachers. You walk into their room and it it's a unique experience. They truly feel special. And for me, it's about, um, it, it come back to this thing about confidence. It's the ability to truly make your classroom, the environment where those children are, something of a journey. So in other words, great teachers realize that everything isn't about control. It's not about over planning. Mm -hmm. It's not about mm -hmm. a delivery of learning. It's about a truly interactive experience. And in, in my experience, truly great teachers often learn as much from their students as they give to their students back. OK, Cindy, you want to jump in here? I have an example. Uh, just recently, we finished uh, Medieval Times. And outside of our classroom, the walls are a castle. And we have drawbridges and torches. And we had a medieval feast uh, to end our week last week, where we had chicken legs and apple tarts and sweet potato pies and, and grape juice in uh, glasses. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't have been happier, more excited, more engaged, more enthusiastic about everything that we had learned along the way and everything that they were going to take with them. And those are the kinds of experiences that give learning uh, a lifelong uh, stamp in time. You have lucky Absolutely. kids in your class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Richard? Absolutely. You know, yeah. The, the, Exactly what you're describing is a three-dimensionality to learning. Yeah. It's a, learning is an intensely um, sensory experience. You know, if you think the greatest things we recall in our lives as we grow older are often related to things like taste and smell and sound. Um, and great teachers understand that instinctively often. And what they do is they create learning experiences. They don't just plan and deliver lessons.